She hadn't written her name in over 20 years. Not with her hands, not with her voice. For decades, she was trapped inside her own body. Her thoughts clear, her will intact, but her body unresponsive. And then, one day, something changed. With a device implanted directly into her brain, Audrey Cruz moved a cursor across the screen, slowly, deliberately, and letter by letter she typed her name, not with her fingers, not with assistance, but with her thoughts alone. This wasn't science fiction, it was Neuralink. And while the world watched in awe or disbelief, something much bigger began to take shape. A new way of communicating, a new kind of freedom, a new kind of dependency. So what just happened and what happens next? For a brief moment, all the noise surrounding Elon Musk, Neuralink, AI, and ethics fell silent. In its place, the quiet, powerful image of a woman reclaiming something that had been stolen from her. Her name. It's one of the first things we learn to write as children. It's how we identify ourselves. How we sign papers, send messages, express agency. For someone like Audrey, it's not just a name. It's a declaration. I'm still here. This wasn't about celebrity or innovation for headlines. It was about dignity, identity, and maybe redemption, both for the person behind the screen and for the technology that made it possible. Let's take a step back. Neuralink is a brain computer interface company founded by Elon Musk with a single bold mission, to create direct communication between the human brain and machines. But until recently, it was mostly theory, wires, labs, white papers. Now, it's real. It's in people. And it's doing things we used to think were impossible. We're no longer talking about a device that helps you type faster or search the web. We're talking about restoring fundamental human capabilities. Thought to action pathways that were once considered permanently severed. But the question remains, is this medicine or the first step toward merging with machines. Audrey's case is powerful, not because of the technology alone, but because of what it reveals about the human spirit. Decades of silence, isolation, dependence, and still she didn't give up. Her success with the Neuralink implant isn't just a technical milestone, it's an emotional one. And for people living with ALS, spinal injuries, or neurodegenerative conditions, it lights up a new path. One filled with questions, yes, but also with hope. She didn't just type her name. She reminded the world what it means to be seen again. But here's where the story turns. Because while one part of the world celebrates Audrey's achievement, another part starts to ask harder questions. Neuralink isn't just a medical tool, it's also a commercial product. It's part of Musk's broader vision. One that includes AI companions, government contracts, and even humanoid robots powered by neural systems. So where do we draw the line? When technology restores agency to someone like Audrey, it's a miracle. But when it extends into everyday life, able-bodied users or children, what does it become? A tool? A crutch? A surveillance device? A dependency? One of the most overlooked parts of stories like Audrey's is this. Who controls the signal? Her thoughts were turned into digital commands. But what filters them? What interprets them? What decides what's normal and what's not? These are no longer theoretical concerns. They are urgent design choices. Because if you can read thoughts, can you modify them? Can you suppress them? In medicine, the answer is caution. In business, the answer is scale. For many, Audrey's success will ignite optimism. It will make families believe again. It will inspire donations, research, clinical trials. But the deeper power of this moment isn't in the typing itself. It's in the return of choice. After decades without autonomy, Audrey didn't just speak, she chose what to say. That's the difference between treatment and transformation. 
between surviving and being alive. And that's why it matters. This is only the beginning. What happens when thousands or millions of people begin using Neuralink devices? What happens when these systems don't just respond to our thoughts, but anticipate them or shape them? Is it healing or training? We say Audrey wrote her name, but what happens when someone asks the device to write it for them? Where does the person end and the interface begin? That's the frontier we're walking toward. Elon Musk has always framed Neuralink as a race against time, against disease, against AI. He says it's about helping people, but it's also about preparing humanity for a world where brains and machines must merge to survive. Audrey's story shows us the beauty of that vision and the risks, because once this interface exists, we won't be able to look away. We'll want more. Faster typing, better memory, enhanced perception, cognitive upgrades. Audrey's miracle might become someone else's enhancement. And that's when the ethical questions begin all over again. Maybe that's what this all comes down to. We build machines, we write code, we inject it into the brain. And for the first time in decades, someone writes their own name again. It's easy to get lost in the headlines, the theories, the politics. But in the end, this story was about something timeless. The power to be seen, to express, to matter. Audrey reminded us of that. Let's not forget. If this story moved you or made you think about what's coming, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share your thoughts below. Would you consider using Neuralink if you lost your voice or your body? Subscribe, like, and join the conversation.